it, every time you play rookies, you just want, you just want to fucking kill them. <laughs> I've never experienced the the racial comments from the Indiana Fever fan base. It's unacceptable, honestly. We've been professional throughout the whole entire thing. And Clark. It doesn't matter who you are, what rookie you are, vets are coming at your neck. Because we're here to show you, like, this is a grown woman's league, and this is the best league in the world for a reason. So it doesn't matter who you are. I'll look back in 20 years and be like, yeah, the reason why we watch watching women's basketball is not just because of one person. It's because of me, too, and I want y'all to realize that. That's all I needed. That's all I needed for him to do that, and it, it became personal with me. If you've been following the WNBA this season, you've probably noticed the arrival of a new star, Caitlin Clark. Fans have been ecstatic about her electrifying shooting and playmaking, but the reception from fellow WNBA players has been far less welcoming. Many took the first opportunity to get physical with Clark, pushing the boundaries of fair play and sometimes making games look more like a street brawl than basketball. Throughout the 40-game season, Clark endured five flagrant fouls and countless other hits that were classified as common fouls. It's not unusual for veterans to be tough on rookies, but what Clark has faced this year goes well beyond the standard rookie hazing. She's been pushed, tripped, whacked on the head, and shoulder-checked, but through it all, she stayed professional and just kept playing as if nothing could faze her. But the real question is, how much more can Caitlyn endure before she decides enough is enough? With every hit, every careless foul, and every unsportsmanlike move, the possibility grows that Caitlyn Clark could walk away from the WNBA. Imagine a league that loses its brightest rising star simply because her fellow players made her feel unsafe and unvalued. The clock is ticking, and unless something changes, the WNBA might be on the verge of losing Caitlin Clark to another league or even another career altogether. Based on all objective parameters, WNBA has greatly benefited from the Caitlin Clark effect, both financially and in terms of much-needed media exposure. Other players will surely get their share of the increased pie, but they don't seem to be particularly thankful to Caitlin for all the good things they can expect in the near future. Instead, they are treating her like the new kid on the block at the very least. And in some cases, there could be actual hostility behind the unsportsmanlike moves. To put it simply, Clark's status as the golden girl is not endearing her to veteran players, who played great basketball for years without the mainstream audience even noticing. Some of them, driven by jealousy over the attention Caitlin is receiving, seem to be taking out their frustration by committing hard fouls and generally being overly physical with her. It is true that every rookie is tested coming into the league, and in Caitlin's case, it was believed that she lacks strengths and toughness. That's why some teams may have tactically decided to play a brutal brand of physical defense on Clark and see how she will react after being sent to the floor a couple of times. If this was the plan, it largely backfired since it turned out that Caitlin isn't soft at all. She didn't react to provocations and generally avoided getting into skirmishes while at the same time displaying a high level of competitiveness even when challenged. Truth be told, she might have committed a couple of hard fouls herself, although none come close to what was done against her. It's almost as if she wore a huge target sign on her Indiana Fever jersey instead of the number 22, but she never complained. Cheap shots against Caitlin Clark came in many shapes or forms, even when she didn't have the ball in her hands. Quite often, bigger players would casually make excessive contact while going for the ball or fighting for position. While this is seemingly normal in basketball, the level of intensity was a bit over the top in several situations. One such situation occurred during the match between Indiana Fever and Las Vegas Aces, when guard Jackie Young clobbered Clark and then fell on top of her while trying to secure a rebound. It all happened in a moment, and to make things more curious, it was away from the ball where Clark wasn't in a position to impact the play very much. Clark, the hesitation, is working inside the reverse. Owen took a big hit there on Jackie Young. Just by looking at this scene, you can see that Caitlin was in some serious pain. Young's move is very careless, and she initiates contact within the flow of the game, but with more force than is really necessary. Then she loses balance and trips right over Clark with her full weight. You can see that the first bump already throws Caitlyn off, but the follow-through really pushes this situation into dangerous territory. Since we know Clark isn't a huge offensive rebounding threat, we can ask why Young felt that it was so important to body check her so urgently and whether a normal box out would have been enough. Or was there some additional reason to be physical when an opportunity presented itself and just try to beat up on the opponent's best player? It's hard to tell based on just a single instance. The thing is, such plays were quite common this year in the WNBA whenever Caitlin Clark was involved. There were a couple of teams that made a point out of playing tough physical defense that bordered on recklessness. Seattle Storm was among such teams, 
and its players obviously made a concerted effort to make life as miserable for Caitlyn as they could. Consider the following example, where center Ezzy Magbagor went all in to block Caitlyn Clark's shot, but ended up making contact with more than just the ball. She whacked Clark on the head so hard that it hurts just to watch this game clip. Goes around to Gumake, drives baseline, and shot rejected by Ezzy Magbagor! Depending from which angle you look at it, this can be described as a legitimate defensive play or a brazen attempt to hurt a smaller player. Magbigor closes out hard on Clark's drive to the basket and rises up for the ball, but she connects with Clark's head quite forcefully. It's understandable that a defender wants to prevent an easy basket, but there has to be a limit to how violent a collision can be before it is deemed to be dangerous. Incredibly, the referees either didn't catch a good angle or thought it's okay to hit people on the head while going for a block, so no foul was called on the play. With the benefit of replay, we can safely say this should have been a foul, perhaps even a flagrant. The Storm promo team even went as far as to use the photo of the collision to promote Magbagor as a Defensive Player of the Year candidate. Essentially, they decided to pretend this was a clean block despite video evidence to the contrary. This decision caused serious backlash from WNBA fans, who called out Seattle for tasteless behavior and manipulative attempt to capitalize on Clark's visibility. Bad fouls can happen during a basketball game but teams shouldn't celebrate them just because the name of the player that ended up on the floor can generate a lot of clicks. It appears that the entire Storm team had something to prove against Clark. When they weren't literally trying to beat her up, Seattle players used every chance to get into verbal altercations with the Indiana Fever star. Even a backup like Victoria Vivians felt compelled to get into a shouting match with Caitlin Clark as they were running up the court. She got into Clark's face and tried to escalate the situation, but fortunately Aaliyah Boston got between the two and led Caitlin away. It wasn't a pretty scene to behold. <laughs> Victoria Vivian's an old Indiana Fever player. The refs called a double technical to defuse the situation, and to be fair, Caitlin did participate in the confrontation at least briefly before walking away. We don't know what was said between the two players or who started it, but it's safe to assume it was a bit personal, which explains why Vivian's kept going at Clark even after Caitlin disengaged. There is a line between trash talking and fighting and this came dangerously close to the latter, without any real reason. Another thing is, bench warmers shouldn't engage stars in trash talk, and Vivian's averaged barely over three points per game this year. She came into the game and tried to bait Clark into an incident that would have cost fever more than it would Seattle. And that's an old tactic that is increasingly being legislated out of the modern game. Caitlin Clark has quickly learned not to take the bait. And while she is fiery on the court, she mostly avoids open conflict. She is still a magnet for hard hits. And at least a part of that comes from panic and frustration on the part of her opponents. Clark has proven that she can attack the basket just as effectively as she can shoot from the outside, with a defender frequently trying to meet her at the rim. In several situations, this has resulted in violent fouls that went a little beyond fair play. A good example was a foul committed by the Las Vegas forward Alicia Clark, a 37-year-old veteran who knows what she should and shouldn't do. Here is how she ended up hitting Caitlin on the head under the basket. First quarter, the Fever getting their first win last night in Los Angeles. Yeah. That's going to be pretty tough, I would think. You can clearly see how Alicia Clark tried to get a block, got a piece of the ball, and then followed through right into Caitlin's head. The most amazing thing is that she protested the foul, even though she must have felt the contact with Caitlin's face that came after she blocked the shot. This play probably wasn't intentional, but it would have been nice to see Alicia Clark admit the foul and check up whether her younger namesake was all right. That's simply not a great example the veteran is giving to the rookie, regardless of the competitiveness of the game or any feelings of envy towards the young prodigy. It's highly likely that media narratives surrounding Caitlin Clark have at least partially caused the players to treat her in this way. In particular, the rivalry between Clark and fellow rookie Angel Reese was one of the most commented storylines of this WNBA season, and it gained a life of its own. It seems that Reese and her teammates on the Chicago Sky took the rivalry a little too seriously as they bodied Caitlin Clark whenever they saw her. In the four games between the Fever and the Sky, Chicago committed four flagrant fouls on Clark for an outrageous rate of one flagrant per game. To make matters worse, some of these fouls were totally pointless and had little impact on the game beyond bothering Clark.
Let's start with the less egregious violations. The foul by Michaela Onionware was reckless and risky, but it happened within the flow of the game and probably wasn't ill-intentioned. She tried to defend a three-pointer and seemingly lost her own balance and slammed into Clark, sending her to the free-throw line. The collision was pretty intense and must have shaken Clark a little bit, and it was enough for a flagrant foul to be called upon review due to a rule that prohibits the defensive player from occupying a shooter's landing space. Take a look for yourself how Onionware prevented Clark's safe landing. There could be some more coming. Clark with the step back and gets fouled. It's pretty clear what happened here. Onionware was late on a closeout and panicked that Caitlin would make the open three, so she lunged forward and then just couldn't stop. However, the mindset that it's better to risk three free throws than concede a shot is illustrative of how the sky had been playing Clark all season long. Onionware couldn't let down her teammates by allowing Clark to shoot unopposed, so she made things worse for her team and earned a flagrant foul. As it turns out, that was only the mildest of nasty fouls that Sky would commit on Clark in their direct matchups. The tone was set early in the season when these two teams met for the first time. It was a close game, and the atmosphere was heated, which led to perhaps the most infamous physical attack on Caitlin during the entire 2024 WNBA season. The culprit was Sky guard Chenity Carter, who was directly matched up against Caitlin for most of the night. After a made basket while the ball was not yet inbounded, Carter just walked up to Clark and drove a shoulder into her, instantly flooring the rookie. It was an act of unprovoked aggression that has no place on the basketball floor. Just look how horrible this rare dead ball flagrant foul looked in real time. Her jumper is good. Kennedy Carter now with 12 points off the bench. Unlike some other fouls on this list, this one was clearly intentional. Carter wanted to send the message that she is the tough one, and she did it in the stupidest way imaginable. It wasn't a basketball play and perhaps should have resulted in a more severe penalty, but Carter was allowed to stay in the game. It seems that the entire Chicago team thought that Carter did nothing wrong, and Carter wrote off the infraction as motivated by competitiveness. The rest of the Sky players were supportive of Carter, both in real time and after the game. Did you notice Angel Reese and the rest of the bench jumping all hyped up when Carter did her dirty move? That's bad sportsmanship, and it explains why Chicago ultimately couldn't beat Indiana on the court as the Fever took the season series 3-1. to one. The last game between the two young teams was especially edgy, and Caitlin Clark endured several other hits. The worst of them was the handiwork of Diamond D Shields, who committed a foul almost as inexplicable as the one from Chenity Carter. She literally ran over Caitlin Clark in transition and made unnecessary contact while leading with her shoulder. Since this happened in open court while both players were in motion, the potential for injury was quite serious. Here is how the play developed that led to this flagrant foul. Here's Clark. Her 29 points gets tripped up. In case you haven't noticed, this happened in the fourth quarter of a game that Indiana was leading by 25 points. The game was a blowout, and the Sky got embarrassed by a team that was playing in sync and with a sense of purpose. D Shields was clearly frustrated that her team couldn't even slow down Clark, so she just got back at her tormentor in a physical way. She was behind the play and couldn't do anything legal to prevent another easy score, so she steamrolled Clark, who didn't even see her coming. It was an act of a defeated, powerless player who can't control her emotions, and it represented a low point of Chicago's season that started so promisingly. The main reason why Chicago hates Caitlin so much is the presence of Angel Reese, who has a long-standing rivalry with Clark dating back to college. This rivalry was amplified as they both joined WNBA the same year and competed for the Rookie of the Year award. Reese has consciously embraced the villain role when it comes to Caitlin Clark, and while she is mostly respectful towards her foe in the media, Angel definitely maintains she is the more talented basketball player. That would all be fine if Reese kept it all on the level of boasts in media interviews, but she has taken part in the headhunting of Caitlin Clark along with her teammates. In fact, she earned one of the four flagrant fouls we previously mentioned on the following play. Go, 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 go! Clark! Again, what starts as a normal basketball play turns into something else when Reese can't maintain control of her arm movement. Caitlin got behind Reese on her way to the basket and was in a scoring position when Angel came from behind and tried to get a block. As she was running late, she couldn't reach the ball and instead caught Caitlin's head. The hit wasn't as brutal as some of the other fouls on Clark this season, but it was pretty unnecessary since it was clear that Reese is two steps late to challenge the shot. Why did she have to continue the movement when she was aware the ball was too far? Is it possible that the strike in the head was a result of a conscious decision? We can't know for sure, but it doesn't look great when you swipe at your arch rival from behind in such a fashion. It is no coincidence that Caitlin Clark is fouled so much. 
It's true that she has the ball in her hands a lot, but as we've seen, she has been clobbered even in situations when she didn't. Some of the shellacking may even have been strategic. The opposing players and maybe even some coaches wanted to see how Clark will deal with physicality and adversity. In other situations, the fouls may have been just a form of petty revenge and a channel to direct professional envy. It's difficult to know which ones have been really malevolent and which just happened because of a misguided effort to stop Clark. There have even been instances when Caitlyn got hit while she was playing defense, despite not being feared as a lockdown defender. Hard screens are common in professional basketball, but they also provide convenient cover for shoving an opponent to the ground without drawing the ire of the refs. At least, that's how the theory goes. But in practice, some of these screens are criminally violent and are totally obvious fouls. Look at this play from the game between the Fever and Connecticut Sun, where Alyssa Thomas basically clotheslined Clark while setting a ball screen for her teammate. Five quick points here for Caitlin Clark, and Thomas just runs over Clark. First of all, Thomas is moving up to the point of contact, which makes this an illegal screen. She goes out of her way to block out Clark and then leans into the pick with way too much force, sending Caitlin instantly to the ground. This is a great example of how a routine play that happens dozens of times every game becomes a little bit more intense when Caitlin Clark is involved in any capacity. Alyssa Thomas is a WNBA veteran with 10 seasons on her resume, so when she does things like this, it's probably not because she got lost in the moment. More likely, she wants to put the prized rookie in her place and tries to do it in a very crude way. This offensive foul happened in a regular season game and could have raised the temperature between the two teams that were destined to meet in the first round of 2024 WNBA playoffs. Alyssa Thomas and the Sun gave Caitlin Clark the first taste of playoff basketball which would be just a part of the learning process if not for some questionable fouls again. Connecticut won Game 1 easily on its own court, but another controversy erupted because Caitlin Clark got a black eye courtesy of Carrington. Clark was attempting to shoot a three when a misjudged challenge turned into an eye poke, causing many fans to suspect this was another cheap shot. This is how it all went down. Harassed by Carrington, finds Boston. Both Clark and Carrington said after the game that the contact was inadvertent, and looking at the footage, it does look like a freak accident. Carrington was defending a pass a little too aggressively and tried to make a deflection, but she didn't even notice that the tip of her fingers made contact with Clark's face. She kept following the play and then ran the fast break while Clark collapsed to the floor in pain. There was no foul called on the play at all, so the referees seemed to agree that the contact was incidental. However, it was enough to give Clark her first playoff bruise, which she wore proudly during the post-game interviews. It was one of those games where nothing goes her way. So, in addition to missing a bunch of shots and losing the match series, she also had to endure an injury scare. While Caitlin played much better in Game 2, Carrington and the Sun were still able to win and end the Fever's season. Given the sheer amount of cheap shots she was subjected to, it's quite fortunate that Caitlin Clark was able to finish her first season in one piece. After every nasty hit, she just stood up and continued to play without responding to the provocation in any way. While we should be thankful that she avoided major injury, we can't condone the treatment that she was given by other WNBA players. In her second campaign, Clark won't have the status of a rookie, so hopefully she will get more respect from defenders and officials alike. But it would be naive not to expect a few cheap shots disguised as hard close-out or bone-jarring picks, despite ample proof that Clark is a true competitor who doesn't change her approach after being hit. Defenders with few other options might continue to exact physical punishment and try to push her around. Judging by the outcomes of this season, Caitlin Clark will continue to make wild shots and connect on amazing passes no matter what the defenses do. For the sake of the game, the opposing coaches should keep their players' aggression under control and search for other ways to impact Clark's play that don't include leaving her bruised and bloodied after every game. In other words, Clark has earned the right to play ball without fearing for her life and limb every time down the floor, and WNBA should step in and punish the worst offenders that are repeatedly targeting Caitlin.